Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here today with you. Um, we got another service that we're going to do Sunday, so this week will be the 27th of October. Um, we talked about one subject that Paul was discussing with people in Corinthians, <coughs> and um, I just want to read two verses to you. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52, I spoke on this subject many times, but I want you to just listen if you would. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, talking about death, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. It's talking about a change, an eternal change. It's talking about how sudden it's going to happen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, um, we shall not all sleep. See, all these people in Corinthians, they're sleeping. You and I are not sleeping. You and I are awake today. We don't have no promise of tomorrow that you and I are awake. I went over to um, another scripture over here that I went to, and it was the one in Thessalonians. Everybody knows which one I'm going to go to, but that's good. He tells us here in this verse, he says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. He doesn't want them to be unlearned. He says that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Well, if we know that if we're not saved, we don't have no hope. We don't have no hope of anything that's going on for the good. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. See, God is... A God of order and he is going to get the ones up that is asleep and I'm thinking of people that are asleep today that is in Jesus that they are asleep in their body but then he goes on to say for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that tells you that he's not talking in his own wisdom that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep it actually means is that the ones asleep is going to go first, and the ones that are alive is going to go second. And then it says in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. See, God's a God of order. God is a God of order. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them who's the them the ones that just left the ones that was raised from the dead and he says here that they shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord but i get a lot of comfort out of that last verse wherefore comfort one another with these words well we talked about one fact and that fact is the Lord is returning. We talked about the return of the Lord. Now, you know, in these verses that we just got finished reading, it's aimed at the saved. That's who it's aimed to. Now, can more people take advantage of that? Yes. It's a mystery to a lot of people. A lot of people, that right there is a mystery. Um, it deserves meditation and it does it deserves meditation our meditation should be on that day when the lord does come back he is coming back and you know i got great news for you all is invited even the lost person is invited jesus just don't want the person to stay lost he wants the person to know him and to know who he is 
It's your end result. It's your choice. See, in that one verse right there that we just read, it says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. See, that word if is a conditional word. In verse 14, First, First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 14, if, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, the ones that, that believed in Jesus and that died and rose again. If you believe that, what he's saying is God will bring with him, meaning that spirit man is in heaven. I had a man, he was saved at 16 years old and he was just visiting the nursing home. And he admitted to me after the service, he said he had been saved since he was 16 years old, but no one had ever told him that the spirit man goes to be with God the Father and the body goes into the ground. And no one had ever shared with him that fact. And, you know, it's very clear. It is your end result and it is your choice. Paul told us a warning. He gave us a warning He's given a warning today. The question you have to ask yourself is, will you be ready? You know, there's a lot of people that won't be ready for that day because they don't take it as it meaning anything. Only the saved will look forward to this day. The lost man's not going to look forward to it, but the saved will look forward to it. Let me quickly give you things that I thought of that I wrote down on my little sheet of paper here. This is what the saved is going to receive. They're going to receive a new body, a brand new body. I wish I had more minutes to be able to go into this, but I don't. We're going to receive a new body. That body's going to be perfect. It's hard for us to imagine a perfect body, but that's what Jesus said. He said it was going to be a body that was going to be incorruptible. See, my daddy's in a corruptible state right now. But when Jesus comes back and pulls him out of that grave, he's going to be in an incorruptible body. That body's going to be perfect. There's going to be no sickness of where that body goes. Think of that. No pills, no syringes, no death. Jesus don't need to have a funeral home in heaven. There's no graveyards in heaven. You know, better than that, it's everlasting. The Bible tells us it's everlasting. You know why I know it's everlasting? Because there's no timepiece there. There's no such thing as time. There's no clock in heaven. I mean, there's no way of keeping time because the sun, there won't be no need of the sun to S you in because the Bible says that the S-O-N is going to be the sun that we need, the light that we need. And you know, because there's no time, you know what else is going to be there? Everlasting joy. The Bible even says in one place in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. Don't suffer in gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. But you know, there's going to be a place of endless joy. It's hard for our minds to imagine. I hope that we can at least try to imagine. The Bible says, Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things that God had prepared for them that love him. But it is a mystery. And he wants us to meditate on that mystery because it is going to happen. I believe it's nearer than we we believe. I believe it's literally at the door. I've been saying that for years, but I do believe it's right at the door. Let me go back to that question that I asked a minute ago. Will you, will Jesus return for you? Will Jesus return for you? Will you be part of this group of people that's going to be called away. You know what? If you're hearing this message today, you're not going to have no excuse. 
because you're hearing the message today. I pray that as you listen to this, that you take your Bible, go get your Bible and open it up. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Just go and go read that last closing 15 verses of 1 Corinthians 15. It's mind blowing of what it'll tell you. Go into 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 18 and stay there and read. I believe it's nearer than we think. I really do. Is Jesus, will Jesus return for you is the question. You have time to meditate on that. I hope you take the time to meditate. It's important. It's your soul. Your soul is at stake. You want it to go to where Jesus said for it to be. Thank y'all for listening.